Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Wikitechie. This is the first video and let me give you a small insight into what to expect from our videos and our channel. We are a small team of tech fanatics geeks who are here to let you know more about the latest and greatest tech innovations. Unlike other tech channels, we emphasize to create videos that will actually help you sort your needs on a budget so to get yourself actual informative videos and contents Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button to get notified for our latest content. Now that we get to know each other, let us start with the video. So in this video, we'll talking about graphics card. A graphics card is actually necessary for all gamers and freelancers who are working with graphics and video editing. Now let's see what are the best options you can buy for your budget gaming PC or your home workstation. Starting our list with Gigabyte GeForce GT710, a low-budget card that comes with some good tricks up its sleeve considering its price point of the 130 bucks. It comes with DDR5 2GB VRAM and 954 MHz clock speed. The 64-bit memory interface used by Gigabyte GeForce GT710 massively increases clock speed. Currently, a 945 MHz clock and an interface are provided. However, due to memory interfaces speed of 500 to 10 MHz, your PC will be able to finish a variety of tasks swiftly and lag-free. Well, from various gameplay videos and reviews, I noticed the best FPS to be 37 and the worst FPS to be 217 while moving about in Minecraft. The average FPS ranged from 80 to 90, it scored a maximum frame rate of 217, an average of 60 and a minimum of 37 while destroying something. The worst FPS in Overwatch was 27 and the average FPS was 30. The maximum FPS was 34 during normal gaming. This results worn awful. Some other features of GTX 710 are CUDA, SciSec Software, Adaptive VSync, and Pure Video HD. GTX 1050 Ti Well, since it features the new GP107 GPU, the GTX 1050 Ti is built on the same Pascal microarchitecture as the other GeForce 10 series card. The 1050 Ti offers 786 CUDA core with a boost frequency of 13192 MHz, as well as 4GB of GDDR5 VRAM operating on 128-bit memory. Despite the fact that SLI isn't supported by these cards, you still get other GeForce 10 standard features like NVIDIA MCL for cool screenshot and support of DirectX 12 and Velcon. We studied the ASUS GTX 1050 Ti from different gamer to combine a result. Other than water slot on the motherboard can supply, the tiny form factor doesn't need any additional power. During the entire three stress test, the system really used less than 160 watt of power in total while maintaining a temperature of under 60-ish degrees Celsius. If your present system has size, power, or thermal limitation, these are very intriguing data. But are they? Due to the fact that this is. However, all tests were done at 1080p as you see the GPU with the less power isn't really intended for people who want 1440p or 4K. Beginning with the previously mentioned Crisis 3, which is still a challenging game, the 1080 Ti performed admirably for a card aimed directly at a lower center of the market. But even if these results are excellent for cheap 1080p cards, does that automatically imply that the card is a good purchase? Well, if you stick strictly to dollar per frame, that depends on how you measure value. RX 580 Let's look at the car's key characteristics first though before determining whether it still has one of the greatest price to perform ratio among GPUs. The RX 580 comes with 8 GBs of GDDR5 RAM and 2304 streaming processor with a boost frequency of 1340 MHz. There are additional 4GB models available, however, these days you should avoid them as 4GBs for GDDR5 are typically insufficient for a AAA title. 
However, with 8 GBs and respectable processing rates, this card is ideal for 1080p gaming. The XFX GTS XXX edition has been reviewed. We have a little bit of a mix in this testing because I didn't think it was quite acceptable to test this particular card at ultra setting for every game because it did struggle occasionally. However, League of Legends was the first game it could play at 4K and max setting without any issues. A very playable and fun gaming experience was provided by the frame rate in this case, which was good with an average of 58 FPS and a bottom 1% at 25 FPS. In GTA 5, which I tested in 1080p and high settings, I switched to AAA games. With an average frame rate of 58 FPS and a lowest 1% of 25 FPS, the frame rate was satisfactory in this case. A really playable and fun gaming experience, no stuttering or frame rate reduction were appeared, and the game looks great. Therefore, the Radeon RX 580 is still a fantastic graphics card where we only consider gaming performance, which is capable of playing every game, especially in 1080p market. RTX 2060 Unsurprisingly, the RTX 20 series was the first generation of RTX card to be released in 2019. Even though it would be great if it had more display connector, 2060 has HDMI, DisplayPort, and that annoying little DVI. Quickly, let's discuss the specification. 2060 is based on the towering architecture 12 nanometer technology. It has 1920 cores and may be suitable for games with a 1920 by 1080p resolution. There are 200 40 tensor core and 30 ray tracing core on this RTX GPU because it is an RTX GPU. Last but not the least, it only uses 160 watt of power which is not a lot by today's standard. Now let's analyze some gameplays after installing the GPU in the system which requires an 8 pin power connector. We tested Microsoft Flight Simulator with a 180p resolution, DirectX 11 API and the highest setting preset. After basically making making one adjustment which is turning off motion blur and flee over to New York with intense details. By the way, with this one, the FPS in the cockpit and third person are essentially the same. Do we advise purchasing a GeForce RTX 2060? We do. In fact, it's a really amazing card as you can see for 1080p gaming. It can even handle some 1440 gaming, but since we used 6 GB of VRAM, it should only be used for 1080p gamings. GTX 1660 is super. The GTX 1660 Super from Zotec has some pretty intriguing aspects, one of which is the design. This is a really attractive GPU that is powerful and we have seen what kind of games it can play from various reviews at 1080p and 4K. It is powered by 8-pin connector and on the back are three display ports, 1.4 and 1 HDMI 2.0 as well as a really nice blower cooling system with a really aggressive gaming style appearance. But the GPU is completely silent. It was being used at around 58-60% to 60%, which is similar to 2200 RPM, which is pretty tolerable level of noise. Of course, the noise is bad, but it isn't bothersome. In contrast to 192 GB per second of bandwidth found in ordinary GeForce GTX 1660 graphics card, the GeForce GTX 1660 Super has 336 GB per second of bandwidth. Performance is generally improved as a result of keeping the graphics card processor better informed. Additionally, it has a dual fan cooler that is mounted on the aluminum heatsink and contains liquid filled with heat pipes that directly contact with the GPU. The heatsink is also used to actively cool the GDDR6 VRAM. This card runs at 1530 MHz megahertz clock speed that NVIDIA advises because Zotec choose not to factory overclock it. The GeForce GTX 1660 Super's twin fans boost clock stays at 1785 MHz. It was carrying roughly 70 to 100 frames per second at Fortnite 1080p with highest graphics card setting, known as the Epoch preset. So we're just fine doing this at an 80. However, moving to 40K will produce different result, which is what I did now with the graphics card on Epic. It means it might get approximately 70 to 20 frames per second, which is not good. 
and if the quality is lower to high preset it will get 80 to 90 a second which is more than acceptable we then looked at how it performed to a different type of game for the horizon for the benchmark so that we can see how consistent it was and what it was getting on 1080 maximum ultra preset roughly well intended not exactly an average of 90 fps before moving to 4k I can say that at least in my opinion of my level of gaming, we can be more than fine to play this kind of game at 1080p. But we will be able to play at 1080p and some games at 4k like Forza Horizon and racing games without any issue and stuttering. Keeping everything in mind, any game you play at higher resolution require more output from your graphics card. It will go off without a hitch with the best budget graphics card. At a fantastic price of about $230, the Zotec Gaming GeForce GTX 1660 Super 6GB GDDR6 satisfies all the requirements for being the finest graphics card for gaming. Surprisingly, it plays all games quite well. However, if you want to obtain performance for both gaming and work, ASUS GeForce RTX 2060 is the greatest graphics card for your money. You can perform competitively better than the other in its price range with the mid-range GPU. I hope this video helped you to know a little bit more about which graphics card to choose from on your budget for your PC or for your workstation. And don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button and there are more videos to coming up so stay tuned, stay tacky with Wikitaki.